to rip all these together, you're walking around and it's, it's ripped up, it's broken. God says, I got a better plan for you. Here's the cool thing, man. I stumbled in that area. Some of you guys did. You came to Christ, and here's what happened. Mended you all back together. And now you stand before Christ, you're a clean sheet of paper. I love that. He says, don't buy into the culture's way of telling you that, that, that sex and, and this and that is, that's not going to fulfill that empty hole. Now again, sex is a great gift, and praise God that he gave it to us. But it's for the right time, in the right arena, and it's blessed. Verse 18, circle that word, I told you guys, flee sexual immorality. You guys remember the woman caught in adultery in John 8? You guys remember that story? And how, it's so crazy, the religious leaders of the time, they dragged this, this lady who had been caught, they said, in the very act of sexual immorality with another guy. And they bring her out into the into the area, open area there, and they're ready to stone her. And Jesus is up on the set. And I always wonder, well, where's the dude? Where's Holmes? I mean, to have sex, you gotta have a guy and a girl, right? They bring the woman out there and put her. And and they say, Hey, the law says we need to stone her to death. Hey, yeah, let's take let's take sin seriously. So they go, What do you think, Jesus? What do you think you should do? I love Jesus. You know what he did? Well, you think you should do that? Okay. Gets on his knee. Starts drawing in the dirt. And scholars suggest, you know what he's writing in the dirt? All these guys that were ready to throw these stones. There's Jacob sleeping with uh, Sally over there. There's Abraham with putting all these little, these, can you imagine? And these guys are seeing Jesus bring into light. Because remember, Jesus is God. He knows what was going on behind closed doors. And one by one, all, all the guys that were ready, to, they had a stone ready to go. Ooh. Well, he knows. They dropped the stone. One by one, the crowd that's ready to throw stones <laughs> are taken off. And no one's there. And Jesus comes up to the woman. What does he say to her? He said, man, where's your accusers? And they're gone. He said, now listen, tune in. This is key for us to understand this. He says, neither do I, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Do you see that? Jesus says, neither do I condemn you, but go, flee, go and sin no more. That's the balance of Jesus Christ. He's full of grace and truth. He says, I know you're going to make mistakes, but man, i got a better plan for your life. I'm going to raise you up. I don't condemn you. I've, I've paid for that sin. But don't, I love you too much to stay in there, man. Flee sexual morality. Now, you've done it. Yeah, you're forgiven. But go and sin no more. Because I think at the church, here's what happens. We fail. We fail on one side or the other. We fail. Oh, you, you, you've done that? We talked about it last week. Well, you're out of here. He'll never forgive you. And there's this legalistic, holier-than-thou mentality in the church. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not it. But then there's, a, there's some churches on the other side. Oh, you, it's okay. God will forgive you. Do whatever you want. And, and we're missing out on God's best for our life. There's a balance that comes together. And it's at the cross. Flee sexual morality. Now, some of you are caught up in that, and you're saying... Yeah, I know that God's convicted my heart, but where do I go from here? I've suggested you can pick up the CDs. I did a message on a, a five-week series on, on this immorality type deal that we all struggle with. Email me. I'll give you a free copy of it. But Matthew 5 and 29, you don't have to turn there. You might want to just jot it down. Matthew 5, 29 and 30 says this. Jesus says, hey, man, if, you're, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. He said, if your hand, guys, causes you to sin... Cut it off. Now, what's he saying there? The way I'm reading that text, he says, man, you need to take some radical measures. Because the fact is, if you pluck out your eye, you're probably going to start peeking with the other eye. You cut off one hand, it's just a matter of time. You're... Now, he's saying take radical measures. I had a talk with a young guy that I've been discipling for a while back in Florida, continuing to battle through the sexual purity. And I'm challenging him from time and time and time again. I said, man, 
take radical measures. God's got a great plan for your life, and Satan knows that, so he's going to throw out all the stops. He sees you starting to grow. He's going to... Women that you've never talked to before, they're going to be walking straight up to you and, and, and challenging you. Let's, let's, let's go do this. Believe me, when God starts raising you up, you start growing in Christ, you're going to get attacked right and left. And I said, bro, do you have a roommate? He said, no, I live by myself. I said, you need to get a roommate. How about cable TV? You got HBO, you got Skinamax, you got all those. Cut it off, man. You've got to cut it off. You got the internet? You struggle on the internet and pornography? Throw the computer away, man. Are you serious about your sin? You really want to get past, past this sin? Take radical measures. Don't you know, in my life, same type thing. I'm, I'm in Florida. I have my own place, whatever. I called the cable company one time. I said, dude, cut off all, all movie channels, whatever. I, I want to do this right. I want to grow. This is back in, you know, in the late 90s. And you know what happened? This is how the enemy works. Week goes by, cable's still rolling, everything, you know. I called up, I called up the lady, I said, man, I, you know, I just tackled this I could. I called you a week ago, dude, like cut off my, my movie channels. She said, oh, we, we're not charging you for them. They must have just got lazy and just not, then you know, they just, we're not charging. So don't worry about it. You can still have them for free. I said, no. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> get homie out here and cut off that, that channel. I'm serious about this sin. I want to get past this, man. I want to live in Christ. So sure enough, you know, I got a little heated, you know. Probably ruined my witness. It's the whole topic of the Bible study today. <laughs> Guys that are traveling, you, you, you travel a lot. You're in business. And you struggle in this area. It's interesting. None of us are, are thinking, none of us are protected from this. There... There was a study done on pastors that would go out and go travel and minister and everything. And pastors were some of the highest percentage-wise that would get that, that video porn or whatever in their room. Guys that travel in business, you'll be tempted with that. If you struggle in that area, say, block it. You, you, remember when you, you signed your credit card? Block it, dude. I don't, even want the, I don't even have the opportunity to stumble in that area. And then you go, well, there's movie channel. Uh, can you take the TV just out of my room? I want to go to my hotel room, and I just want to have my Bible. I'm serious about getting through this and living a pure life and being able to represent Christ in a pure and holy way to a world that's desperately needing that. We're in Corinth, man. We're in a sex-dominated culture. Radical measures is what he says. You know what he says in verse 18? When you, when you stumble in this area, you're sinning against your own body. I'm going to read this, and you can jot it down. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 gives you some pretty serious text here about when you go ahead and choose to make this sin, there's going to be some fallout of your body in, in this area. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7, I'm going to read it for you. This is the will of God, man, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual morality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles, and look at this, who do not know God. He said, you, you as a Christian should know, you should have this desire to live a pure life. Not like the people that don't know God, they don't know any better. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we forewarned you. And testified, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. I gotta tell you, I've been, I've been, I've, I've, I've lived that. I've lived that. It took me a while to get through that area of my life. And God, the way He taught me was through physical pain. Hamstring, boom, knee, blown out. Warren Wearsby got a Greek commentator of the Bible. He has a had an illustration on sex inside of marriage and sex outside of marriage. He said sex going outside of marriage is kind of like robbing a bank. Kind of exciting. You know? All right. This is, kind of, this is getting kind of boring. I, I need to spice up my life. I'm going to go rob a bank. I go in and put ski mask on, right? And my nine. All right, give me the money. You know? Get the money. But here's the thing. You know how you live your life after you rob the bank? Complete fear, guilt. <clears throat> Looking behind, right? Thinking your, your line, your landline's tapped. 